You can watch all the videos you want, but you're not going to get better at math and have amazing problem solving skills if you don't apply it. So today we're going to go through a real algebra one example that I went through with my student. There are so many important lessons in this set of two simple problems. I'm Amy and I attended Caltech and I'm a private math tutor. It doesn't matter what math level you're in. You could be above algebra one, currently in algebra one. Maybe you don't even know this concept yet, but it doesn't matter. You're going to see how this example illustrates the kind of approach and mindset such that you can solve any problem easily. So the problem is about sequences. We have D1 equals three and D n equals dn minus 1 minus 14. So this is the given information. And the question is, what is the third term in the sequence? Every time I ask a question, you should definitely pause the video and try to answer it yourself. Because at that point, when I ask a question to my student, I would have them give an answer. And that is the key part of stretching your brain such that you can figure out the answer yourself you're not gonna have a tutor on the test with you. So first of all, what do you think as you look at this problem? Do you have any ideas? Pause the video and write down some thoughts. Just pretend I'm completely lost. I have no idea how to do this problem. So what I would do is to start from the fundamentals and to go back to the basics of what everything simply means. So first of all, I know that D of some term this just means that it's a function of x. So d of x is a function of x. It's just like when you learn that kind of machine, basically it's like, oh, x goes in this way, and then whoop, you have the function x, out pops out f of x. So a letter with parentheses, that just indicates that something is being done to that term in parentheses. That is why d of n just means some kind of function of n. It could be, you know, 2n, it could be like 3n plus 2. We don't know and it actually doesn't matter as, as we'll see. So we have to understand the basic definitions first. Next, what is all the information given? What does d1 equals 3 mean? This means that when you plug one in for n, we get three. This means that it's the first term in the sequence. And therefore, um, just to extend it, if we have dn, that's just the nth term in the sequence. We're not gonna worry about this expression yet because it might be a little daunting, right? What we're gonna look at next is what is the thing we're even trying to find? So we're looking for the third term in the sequence. What is the third term in the sequence represented by? Yes, that is D3. The goal is to find D3. So we want to take steps to get closer and closer to finding D3. And I just wanna clarify that when I was teaching this with my student, she learned sequences and functions but for some reason then she was like, oh, for f of x, for example, this is a function, if I have f3, then I can divide both sides by three. That is wrong because that's not the same thing as f times three, okay? So this is why it's so, so important that we are not memorizing in math, but we are understanding what f of three even means because even though my student had learned what these functions mean, she for some reason just guessed, oh, because there's a three there, maybe I can divide three by both sides. So we have to be able to justify every single step. Whenever you're doing math and you do a step, you have to be able to say, I'm gonna divide by three because blank. And it has to be a reasonable explanation, not just because you feel that it's right. So how do we get closer to D3? Well, let's go back to what we're given. In a problem when we're stuck, we have to go back to the problem and ask, what is a piece of information that I haven't used yet? At the end of the day, we need to use all the information given in the problem because usually you need all of it to solve it. So 
in our expression underlined in gray, what if I plug 3 in for n? So 3 in for n sounds kind of similar. Then we get d3 equals d3 minus 1, so it's 2 minus 14. Okay, great. We're one step closer, right? Now, what do you think we can do next? There's a question, right? So you have to stretch your mind and think of what the next step is. So we actually haven't used a piece of information yet. We haven't used the fact that d1 equals 3. That's what I meant before. Like we have to go back and see what piece of information have we not used yet? How can we make things that are familiar to us? So if d1 equals 3, I would like to convert that into a usable format because in this current equation, I don't have a d1, right? So we need to link it somehow. So I'm just going to try in the gray underlined equation to plug in 1 for n. What do I get? I get d1 equals d1 minus 1, which is d0 minus 14. Okay, well, we get a d1, but this is not helpful, right? Because now we have a completely new variable, which is d0. So what's another way that we can get out a d1? Yes, if you were trying to follow along and answer the questions I ask, you would think, oh, we can put in 2 for n. If we plug in 2, then we get d2 equals d2 minus 1, 1 minus 14. So once you build the math sense, you will find it obvious that you plug in 2 for n because in this gray underlined expression, this term right here is just going to be 1 less than the n. So if n is 2, then you get that that will become a 1. Wow. Now, what's the next step? So this is literally each point that I asked a question to my student to push her along. Okay, yes, so we have to remember why we did this in the first place. It's because we want to use this d1. So let's plug in d1 into this equation. Then we get d2 equals 3 minus 14, which equals negative 11. Great. Well, now what we can do is, you tell me, Think of it yourself. Yes, now we can finally link it to this equation because we always are trying to get closer and closer to what we want to find in the first place, which is this d3. Okay, so now we can plug in d2 because d2 equals negative 11. d3 equals negative 11 minus 14, which equals negative 25. Wow. So even if you didn't have your teacher walk through a single problem that looked like this before, do you see how with logic and problem solving skills that you can just figure it out? What is crazy is that before getting to this final answer of negative 25, so when I was doing this with my student that I tutor, I was right here at this step. And I asked my student, what do you do next? She said she was confused. She had no idea. I didn't give up. This is the, the way you need to think. So I just said, think longer. Think as long as you need to, because I know that you can figure this out. She thought longer. Oh, suddenly she realized that we can plug this D2 back in right here to get what D3 is, just like in our last step. And all it took was for her to be determined and realize like, I can figure this out. I told her, I know you are smart enough to figure this out because I know that you listening and watching are able to figure out these math problems, but you are not trying enough. The problem of you not trying is not necessarily your fault, honestly. It's because your teacher is teaching you like, oh, I have to tell you the steps to do. So that's why 
when you don't know what to do within the first few seconds, you will give up and you will say, I don't know and stop trying. But you have to be like, I am not at my limit until I've used every single piece of information in the problem. Because all my student had to do was she went back into the problem and looked at and saw, oh, well, at the beginning we wrote this equation, but we stopped using it. We stopped proceeding further. So that's all you have to do. You have to just look back in the information, in the steps to see whether there's just something you haven't used yet. And naturally the answer will fall out so, so easily. Another fantastic example that's also to do with sequences, and this is actually a simpler question. So the question is, we have CN equals negative six plus five times N minus one. What is the eighth term of the sequence? When we had this problem in our tutoring session, I told my student, I know you can solve this, so solve it right now. At first she was like, but I've never seen a problem like this before. It doesn't matter because I knew that she was able to solve it. Just like you, whenever you're approached with a new problem, you should know I can solve this and that's the attitude that actually allows you to be able to solve it. So I waited. Okay, so same thing, right? We have to understand what we're even trying to do. The eighth term means that we are trying to find C8. What does that mean then? We plug in eight for N. It's pretty straightforward, C8 equals negative six plus five times eight minus one, okay? And usually I wouldn't write this out because it's just straightforward seven. My student said, okay, next, we're gonna do negative six plus five, which is negative one, then times seven, so we get negative seven. What's wrong with that? You have to be able to see what's wrong with that, okay? It's because of the order of operations. This is why math is cumulative. You cannot rely on memorization because if you memorize level one, you're gonna to have to memorize number two. You memorize and you continue and your brain just can't hold on to that much information. So you have to understand instead. You don't have to memorize how to tie your shoelace, right? If you had to memorize and spend that effort knowing how to tie your shoelace, knowing how to brush your teeth, everything that you do in a day, your brain would explode. So the same thing with math. My student, she might be in algebra one, but if she doesn't remember or understand per se, the things from elementary school, she's gonna get the answer wrong. Therefore, she would actually be getting a result, a zero on this problem, that would be the same result as a student who didn't know algebra one and the same result as a student who didn't know how to solve this problem, and the same result as a student who doesn't know how to problem solve. And that's because math is black and white. Every calculation matters. If the number is off by one, it's wrong. If you make a calculation error, it's wrong. So you can understand sequences and functions and calculus, but if you do not know order of operations and you make that calculation error at the end, there's no saving you. And in fact, this should become a habit that you always multiply first in this scenario. We get negative six plus 35, and the answer is 29. Again, these are problems that my student has never seen before, but by me asking questions of like, what does this term mean? What does this definition tell you? How do you do this? How do you use this? How do you link this together? you can solve it yourself. Those are the lessons today. I just found it super, super important to get this out and tell you as soon as possible because my eyes have just been opened up to how terrible math teachers are. And I learned this through the students that I tutor. Because when I ask my students, oh, when you learned this in class, did your teacher explain why this works? She's like, no. And then I was like, okay, then why do you do this here? And then my, my student's like, oh, just because the teacher told me to. But how are you gonna live life like that? That's not problem solving. 
you can't get better at math like that. <clears throat> My voice is getting hoarse. Make sure to subscribe for more videos like this and let me know what kind of level you're at, whether this was helpful. There's so many people with different math levels, but this kind of hits upon different fundamentals and things we should always, always remember.